Is it really any surprise that even today, Coach Floyd Ben Schwartzwalder is still a larger-than-life figure on the Syracuse University campus? After 1949, his first year at the helm here, there would be 22 consecutive non-losing seasons, including a national championship in 1959. From his days as a member of the West Virginia football team to his time as an officer who paratrooped into Normandy, Ben was a hard-nosed, no-nonsense fellow. He carried that military idea, that training, you're committed to your officers, you do what you're told, you do, you do it right, you learn skills, knowledge, and develop an attitude that's just right for what you're doing and he'd do it. And he was good at that, and I admired that in him. He was tough on the field, and he was tough at practice. I mean, our practices were long. Jim Ridlon and Jim Brown played in the same Syracuse backfield from 1954 to 1957. Joining them at quarterback in 1955 was a native Syracusan, Chuck Zimmerman, a former star at Christian Brothers Academy. While Ridlon was an all-county quarterback at Nyack High outside of New York City, for Jim and Chuck, playing college ball was a whole new world. Training camp was, you went out there and you became fodder for the varsity. You know, you went out there, they'd line you up and run over you. If you were a good athlete, you didn't take that. When someone pounded you, you pounded back. When someone tried to catch a pass on me, they had a hard time because it was my ball when it was in the air. So they find out a lot about their freshmen. When you came out to, to go down to the practice field, first thing you had to do was hit those ropes. You had to climb and pull yourself up for, from the ground floor up to the top and touch the top and then come back down again. <laughs> Wasn't a great way to start the the practice, I'll tell you. <laughs> we had other quarterbacks who could throw the ball, but Chuck Zimmerman knew who to throw it to and when to throw it. He was the brightest quarterback I've ever played with. Jim Ridlon was an offensive threat at any position. In his senior year against Holy Cross, he scored touchdowns with an interception, a reception, and rushing. Everybody's following Jim Brown in the line of scrimmage, you know, and I just scoot out around and wave to them as I go by. In those days, you didn't get a complete scholarship. You got, you got your tuition, but you had to have a board and room job. 20 hours a week you had to work. And my job, my freshman year, was to go to the top floor of Slocum and clean the whole top floor, empty the garbage pails, vacuum the offices, and that took about an hour and a half. When I was on campus, we lived in what we called the shacks. The shacks were a string of military buildings that had been vacated. They used those facilities for athletic dorms. So we had a dorm that had two to a room or three to a room and one shower. Campus was pretty much the same as it is, except there were more activities related to sports. Syracuse was kind of known as a, as a fun school. And while some were involved with mischievous actions, other students were involved with the action on the field. The engaging Janet K. Smith was the newest woman leading the hundred men on the field. And John Brodsky was the man behind the microphone calling out their formations. And now, ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Maurice W. Stith and featuring National Baton Twirling Champion Janet K. Smith, here is the Syracuse University Marching Band. Take it away, Janet K. 
I was down there with the camera, and it was, uh, it was a lot of good memories. Jerry Kleinberg was a still photographer for the Daily Orange and got to view the games from the sidelines. You had to remember that you're there to work and not to just watch the game is, is one of the things. Um, you're there in all kinds of weather. It's a great challenge to, you know, try to guess where the next play is going to go. Is it going to be a run, a pass? Be ready to shoot it on the sidelines. Don't get in the way of the other players and coaches that are on the sideline because you can't get in front of them. you got to stay on the sides. And it was a, a muddy day, and I just happened to turn around at the right time. And they slipped, and they seemed to be enjoying themselves. <laughs> Colgate weekend was always a very big time on campus. Well, Colgate had a good team. Back through the 20s and 30s, they would beat Syracuse every other time, or every time. They were the dark cloud that hung over Syracuse. There was a lot of uh, horseplay going on. The Colgate guys would come up and on our campus and we go down on their campus. During Colgate week, you never quite knew what was going to happen next. Taylor Lake on the Colgate campus would frequently end up dyed orange. And in retribution, SU Saltine Warrior would get a purple paint job. Marshall Street once was painted entirely purple. Colgate came up, said the hell with campus, what would do where they guys go to have a beer. All fun and games, but don't get caught, or you'd end up with an S or a C shaved on your head. Just ask Jerry. And they sat us on the front porch of the fraternity house and shaved our heads, and as a crowd gathered to watch. At the football game, I was wearing a hat. <laughs> Students of both schools had to stay up. The fraternities had to walk campus had to be aware that something was going to happen, <laughs> and it normally did. They had to be there to fight for Syracuse. During quarterback Chuck Zimmerman's three years, his teams won 20, lost seven, and tied one, which included appearances in the Cotton and Orange Bowls back when such a bid put you in exclusive and elite company. That was an accomplishment, you know, and to go twice in, in three in the three years, yeah. I felt that was pretty good, it really did. Every once in a while I'll sit down and, and just look, because you kind of forget, you know, some of the things that happened, and it brings back memories. This was all done for my mom. Okay, mom, roll those headlines and highlights. And the ball bounced right up, and I just, I, I grabbed it. <laughs> and I took off and, uh, and went, went, I think it was 30 some odd yards for a touchdown. Sitting in back to pass, and he lets it fly way downfield. We th threw a pass which uh, Dave Baker caught, and for about a 40 to 45 yard gain, and that got us out of our own end where we'd been stuck for a good quarter and a half. And that kind of got us going. So we ended up winning that game. And it was the first time we had beaten Penn State at Penn State mm -hmm. in 24 years. So that was pretty exciting. Syracuse and Pittsburgh. And we drove 80 yards in the last couple of minutes. With three ticks on the clock, the Panthers are lining up for a game time field goal. And we were all yelling, watch the fake. And it's a Hail Mary into the end zone. Who's going to catch it? Chuck Fogarty went up and grabbed the ball and intercepted it and came down with the ball in the end zone. And that's how the game ended. The fans were all over the, the field. And I never saw them get out of the stands so quick. And it was so loud. 
for like 20 minutes afterward, you could still hear the people make a noise. I got my locker and I got my, happened to get my locker right next to Jim Brown. He was 230 pounds his last year and uh, he had like a th 29 and a half inch waist. He'd walk and, uh, and the muscles would ripple in his legs. He wasn't highly recruited, but he was highly wanted. They didn't think he would finish school. They didn't trust him as a student. They knew he was a great football player and could really help the program. But Jim Brown came here and he surprised everybody. He was a good student. He was a good ROTC student. And not only was he a good football player, he was a good basketball player and the best lacrosse player I've ever played lacrosse with. Yeah, he was a super athlete, never missed a class, never, never screwed up. His board and room job, he did it like everybody else. Yeah, he turned out to be the exact opposite of what they anticipated. On November 17, 1956, in his final home game versus Colgate, Jim Brown set an NCAA record by scoring six touchdowns and also kicking seven extra points, assisted by his holder, Chuck Zimmerman. And he also, he had a 50-yard run for a touchdown that was called back in that game also. And he was so determined, and he was so annoyed at Colgate saying they're gonna beat us reading all that, and of course, Schwarzwalder egging him on. Schwarzwalder would say, yeah, Jim, you're gonna lose it today. Colgate says they're gonna beat you. I hope you haven't read too much about that. Yeah, he set up Jim Brown's mind for that. In 1958, Chuck made the cover of Sports Illustrated. That was over 60 years ago, and I still get letters occasionally. They send me their copy and ask me if I would sign it. But it always amazes me that they still find out where I am and I'm still alive. <laughs>